presentation discusses writing a literature review for a research paper. A literature review is often one of the longer sections of a paper. Although sometimes it will be combined with the introduction, but you may notice in some papers as you read. A literature review provides a foundation for you to build the rest of the paper from, so investing the time into gaining this background knowledge is worth it. When you begin to write this section of the paper, you will have already completed your annotated bibliography. So most of the work for gathering sources should be done. What you may find is that you have identified a specific source for your data or a specific methodology you plan to use so that it isn't completely outlined in the initial papers you found. And you will need to find papers that do outline those topics, although that may end up in the introduction or methodology instead. When conducting research, it is easy to go to one source. However, you need to include a variety of sources in your research. Do not use one source over and over. Other papers have likely said similar things and you broaden your paper and yourself by using more sources. Make sure all sources are current unless they are a landmark study, like the first person to say something and you wish to present the historical track of your topic. Sometimes it is necessary to look beyond peer-reviewed journal articles, although too much of this is not encouraged for this paper. However, you may continue writing or you may be writing on a cutting edge topic with little published and you need to look further. For instance, I have been working on research using text mining in video game forums and not much is published on the topic. I then had to look online for information and statistics. In that case, Evaluating your sources is very important. You can evaluate your sources using the following questions. For author, who is the author? Why should I believe what he or she has to say on the topic? Is the author seen as an expert on the topic? And how do you know? Current. How current is the information in the source? When was the source published? Is the information out of date? And finally, accuracy. Is the content accurate? Is the information presented objectively? And do they share the pros and cons? After consulting a variety of sources, you may need to narrow your topic. For example, the topic of internet safety is huge, but you could narrow that topic to include internet safety in regards to social media apps that teenagers are using heavily. Topic like that is more specific and relevant. Some questions to think about to help you narrow your topic. What topics of the research interest me the most? 
what topics of the research will interest my audience most? And what topics will the audience find more engaging, shocking, inspiring? What data is available for this topic? And what research questions come to mind regarding this topic? Now that you have narrowed your topic, you will want to organize your research in a structure that works. There are some common organizational patterns based on the kind of research you are doing. You can create a literature map or another type of organizational document, but often creating a visualization of how you see the literature relating is helpful to organizing the structure of your literature review. The organizational structures we will discuss are chronological, thematic, methodological, and theoretical. This is not something you will submit. It is just to help you visualize how the information goes together. For example, returning to the online health communities example, research could be sorted into categories based on disease, like cardiovascular disease, depression, etc., or sorted into communities used by the patients themselves or those used by caregivers. As you read, I encourage you to write down the points in the papers that stand out to you and then list them with other papers that make the same point. It can be in a chart, table, a list. It does not have to be a graphic as shown here, but you really should sort the papers by the point you want to make. Some papers will make more than one point that you wish to highlight. For instance, one paper could state a fact you want to cite and use a methodology you want to use and also outline a literature gap that you are addressing. You could then sort that paper into three categories and then utilize that paper in those three sections of your paper. No matter how you do it, organizing your information makes the writing go much faster, more smoothly, and generally improves the readability of your paper. So identifying the gap. As you read the background literature, what you are looking for is research that has not been done. What question hasn't been answered? It may not be a large gap. Maybe someone looked at participation in online health communities for depression, but no one has looked at online communities for parents of children with genetic disorders. That is a gap in the literature. Ultimately, that is what you are looking for, the niche that your research can fill. In the introduction section of your paper, you will outline this gap and then return to explain it more fully here. For now, it is just important to identify it and mention it. Structure. There are many ways to structure your literature review. If you search online, you will find far more than we are going to discuss here, but 
I am choosing to highlight these because I think they are most likely to be useful to you for this paper. Normally, you will use only one of these styles, but it is possible to use a combination of them. Theoretical is the most professional for a researcher, and while writing your dissertation will likely be the most useful to you because it is easy to make longer by bringing in research from that theory. When writing your literature map, it will likely be sorted by concepts, so that is probably the easiest method, although not the most convincing or professional. So let's look more at the other formats closely. The chronological approach traces the topic over time. It doesn't work for many research papers because we aren't generally trying to give the history of something, but elements of this are often worked into a trace uh, research theme. This method is easy to write because it follows the topic through time and easy to organize. It is also a method that easily becomes too repetitive, like describing someone's lineage. It just says the same thing over and over. So if you do use any element of this, be sure that you are focusing on patterns, key studies, and marked, that marked a turning point and demonstrate the direction your topic followed over time. In completing the annotated bibliography, you may have noticed several themes in the papers you read. This is a good way to organize the literature review of a research paper because you can pull in the themes you plan to use in your research and thoroughly discuss them, setting the stage for your research. While this method is easy to organize and write, it is important you think it through to the end before you start it, which really is true for any type of literature review. You would not want to introduce a theme that your research does not later address. An example for how to organize thematically is if you were writing about inequalities in migrant health outcomes. You could sort the research into the themes of healthcare policy, language barriers, cultural attitudes, legal status, and economic access. Then you could write about each of these themes. Be sure to use transition sentences between paragraphs and between sections of the paper to improve the readability. Methodological, this is another good method for a research paper because it highlights the research method used and makes it easy to find and highlight the gap in the literature. Since our paper will be quantitative finding papers that have studied the topic quantitatively, it can make an excellent source. Just be sure to look to see if anyone has done research on your exact topic. If you do, then you will need to modify your topic so it is not the same. Also, this paper will likely be empirical so discussing relevant theoretical works is a good strategy. Also, discussing other studies that have done something similar to what you plan to do, but on another topic or in another field provides a good base as well. If you write in this style, you will likely use something from all or many of these 
or a combination of methodological with thematic, with the methods being the theme. You can also look at studies in sociological, historical, or a cultural setting, but it may be more useful to look at the business type. If you were looking at a type or specific benefit or drawback of social media, you could look at restaurants, banks, and retail to see the applications in each setting. A theoretical approach to the literature review is common in research papers to provide a theoretical foundation for your research. If you choose this method, you will choose one or more theories or models to structure your research design around. This is a very formal way of writing and more research is moving away from this method, but it's still a very valid method. It is likely the most difficult method, but it makes later sections of your paper easier because you have already outlined a model and a theory, which you draw from later. For any of these methods, I encourage you to look at the papers you are reading and determine what method or methods they used and then determine how these types of literature reviews will best suit your paper. The literature review will be submitted on its own to highlight that it should be able to be read on its own but then also fit within the research paper. With this in mind, it needs to have an introduction, body, and conclusion. It should summarize and synthesize, giving an overview of the main points of each source, and then presented it as a cohesive work. You should not just be paraphrasing other researchers. You need to add your own interpretations of what you are reading when possible. You should present the significance of the findings as they relate to the field as a whole. You should be evaluating the research you are reading, highlighting their strengths and weaknesses throughout this section. Before completing this section and any section of the paper, you need to read it over carefully to make sure it is proper. Paragraphs should be a proper length, although longer is usually fine if they need to be, but need transition sentences and topic sentences should be used to make a cohesive paper. Make sure your spelling, grammar, and sentence structure is good as well. All references should be on a separate page or pages at the end of the section, which will later be integrated with the entire reference list. Be sure it is in proper APA format. Does not count toward the total page length. Something is cited in the text, it must be in the reference list. And if it is in the reference list, it must be cited in the text. This section should have at least 10 references. The font should be Times New Roman 12 point. It should be double spaced with one inch margins. The title should just be Literature Review since it's just a section of the paper. You do not need a title page. This section should be three to five pages, not counting the references. This is likely going to be the longest section of the final paper, but that may depend on the direction your research takes. 